Hey guys, hope you're well. Now we're gonna start doing the really interesting stuff, uh, which is all about stoichiometry. Now, what is stoichiometry? Well, for a lot of you, it's something that's been giving you quite a headache at school, I can imagine, but it's actually really, really simple. Of course, it has to be explained nicely, and that's what this lesson's gonna be about. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna show you how stoichiometry works. I love stoichiometry, but I used to hate it when I saw it for the first time, and it took me quite a while before someone actually explained it to me nicely, and once I understood it, it was so easy easy. So what we do, okay, is you need some type of um, chemical equation. So let's say, for example, we have iodine plus HCl, and that turns into, let's just write that as a small l, that turns into um, Cl2 plus HI. Now, step one, make sure that this reaction is balanced. Okay, remember how to balance? Well, there's two things that you always need to balance. You always need to balance the valencies, which is the numbers that go on the inside, like over there, you know, those kinds of numbers. And then the next thing you tr you need to always make sure is balanced is the coefficients. Kevin, what are coefficients, bro? It's the numbers in the front. So let me quickly show you. So valencies are all the numbers on the inside. So there and there, and then coefficients are the numbers in the front. Okay, so we must make sure that all of that is balanced before we do any stoichiometry. Stoichiometry, we haven't even started that part yet. So to balance the valency numbers, we need to know the valencies from our periodic table. And if there was anything like, I don't know, something like NO3, SO4, those are polyatomic ions, and those you would have to know the valency um, by just memorizing from previous chapters, okay? So don't worry about anything that's by itself. We don't need to look at that. Now, if we look at HCl, we know that hydrogen is in group one, so that's a positive one for its valency. Cl is, um, remember how valency goes? Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one. Now, oh, by the way, something I should mention that's quite important. If they give you an equation like this, if they wrote out the whole equation, then the valencies would be balanced already. Okay, but I'm just getting you into the technique of remembering how to do valencies because sometimes they're not going to give you the written equation like this, but they're going to write it out in words and then they're going to say something like hydrogen chloride and then you need to go say HCl, but it might be HCl2 or it might be H2Cl and those are the things, that's where it's important, okay? But when they give it to you written as a chemical formula like that, then the valencies are already done, but let's practice it anyways, okay? So Cl is negative one. So when these two numbers are the same, nothing that you need to do, so that's all fine. Don't worry about anything that's by itself. Now for hydrogen, that's plus one, for iodine, that is negative one. So when these two numbers are equal, no worries about that. Okay, so all the valencies are done. We knew that already, but it's good to check and to practice that. Now the coefficients. Now to balance the coefficients, which is the numbers in the front, we use these steps that we looked at in one of our earlier chapters. So step one, balance all of the metals. Now in this example, there are no metals, okay? So step one is done. Step two, balance all of the non-metals. Now remember the non-metals are everything on the right-hand side of these of the step, um, but you can ignore, um, don't do hydrogen and don't do oxygen right now. That comes in later steps. Okay, so any non-metals, yes, there's iodine and there is chlorine. Okay, so on the so we divide it into the left hand side of the reaction, which is the left of the arrow, and the right hand side of the arrow. So on the left hand side for iodine, there are two. At the moment there are two, and on the right hand side there is only one. So to fix that, you don't put a number over you don't put a number over here because that's a valency number, and we've already done the valency numbers. So you have to put it in the front. Okay? So now we have two on the left, two on the right. Excellent. Then the next non-metal is chlorine. So on the left-hand side here, we have one chlorine, and on the right, we have two. So we don't put a two here, you put a two in the front. Okay, so all the iodines and all the, uh, so the non-metals besides hydrogen and oxygen have been balanced. Next step, balance all of the hydrogens. So on the left, we have two of them. And on the right-hand side, we also have two. And then there's no oxygen, so we are balanced. Okay, guys, so now none of that was stoichiometry, but that has to be done before we can do stoichiometry. Um, to be able to do stoichiometry, um, 
the reaction must be balanced. Otherwise, it just, it's completely wrong. Now, stoichiometry. The main thing I want you to think about in stoichiometry is the moles, moles. Now, we've looked at a lot of different formulas in the previous lessons where we get moles. One of them was this one. Another one goes like this. Another one goes like this. And there's also one that uses concentration. Guys, these four formulas are golden in stoichiometry because each of them has moles. There, 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 and there. There. So you are going to be able to, or you're going to need to know how to use all of them. And I have showed this in previous lessons. Um, and you're going to need to know how to use all of these to be able to get moles. Because here's the golden rule of stoichiometry. If you, or no, let me just say, um, the golden rule is to get the moles of one of the substances. So if you could just get the moles of this one, or um, this one, or this one, or this one, you only need to get the moles of one of them, then you will be able to calculate or to get the moles of all the others using ratios. And these numbers in the front are the ratios. Okay? So at the moment, uh, this number is a 1, this number is a 1, this number is a 2, and this number is a 2. So you only get the moles of one of them, and then you use the ratios to get the moles of all of the others. And the way that you get the moles is depending on the information that they give you in the question, you would need to use one of these four formulas. Okay, so are you ready for that now? So I'm gonna give you, a, I'm gonna give you some extra information about uh, this question now, and then I'm gonna give you a question on that. So here we go. They tell us that 146 grams of HCl is given. Okay, so they tell us the mass of this one. So we have this one's mass, and then they say determine the mass of Cl2. So how do we go from there to there? Well, if you listen to what I said, I said get moles, that's step one. So just go get the moles, of this one. Now, be careful. A lot of learners get confused with what to do with this number in the front. So, they've given us the mass of HCl. So, we're going to use this formula. So, we're going to say N equals to M over capital M. And we're going to say the given mass is 146. And the mass on the periodic table, remember this capital M is called molar mass on the periodic table. And it's got one hydrogen and then there's one chlorine, so that's 35.5. Okay, so if you had to work that out, you end up with four moles. So I'm just gonna say here, four mole. So that means we have, um, so that means we have four mole of HCl. But Kevin, what is the two in the front? Doesn't the two mean we have two moles? No, not at all. These numbers in the front are just ratio numbers, okay? They, they have nothing to do with how many moles we have. Okay, so there we've got the moles of one of them. Now, remember what I told you over here? I wrote a little thing down. I said, get the moles of one of them. So once you've done that, everything is easier, or everything's easy from this step onwards, okay? Because now we can go get all of the moles for this one, this one, and this one, just using ratios. But we don't need to go get the moles of this one or this one, because they're not asking us about those. They're only asking us about this one. So here's where ratios come in, and this is why it's important that we balance the equation first. So if you look at the ratio of HCl to Cl2, the ratio over here is 2 to 1. Okay. What you then do is you take what we've worked out, which is HCl, and we have a 4. But what we don't know is what this would be. Okay. So that's an x. So what you now do is you connect these two using arrows. Don't worry, this is all gonna become clear as we do more examples. Right now it is gonna feel a bit weird. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply the arrows. So that you're gonna multiply those two. So that's gonna give you 2x. You say equals, and then you're gonna multiply these two. And that'll give you four. Then I want you to solve for x. So x would be four divided by 
two, which is two. So that means we have two moles of Cl2, okay? So therefore, we have two mole of Cl2. Now that we know the moles of Cl2, we could use this formula again, because now we have the moles of Cl2, and we also know the, the mass of Cl2 on the periodic table, and so that will allow us to work out the mass, and that is what they've asked us to do. So remember that to be able to get this one, you could make a little triangle for yourself, which we've looked at before, okay? And to get this M at the top, you end up saying N multiplied by capital M. And so to work out the mass, we'll take the number of moles, which we have two, multiplied by the mass of Cl2 on the periodic table. Now Cl2, there are two chlorines, so you never ever use these numbers in the front on the periodic table. Never, ever, ever, okay? But you do use the numbers on the inside. So Cl2, there's two of them, so that's going to be 35.5 um, times 2. And so if you had to go calculate this, you end up with 142 grams. 142 grams. It's rather right it over there. And that would be the answer of that question, okay? But now we need to do a lot more because I know right now you might still be feeling a bit weird about all of this. So let's go do some more examples now. All right, so here's our next example. Now remember, first step, remember you need to balance. Now there's two things you always need to check and that's the valencies. But we are gonna skip that step because I told you in the previous example that when they give you the equation, the valencies are balanced. You know the little numbers that go in the inside they would have taken care of all of that for you. But what we need to go and do is balance the coefficients, which is the numbers in the front. You know, this number, this number, this number, this number, and this number, okay? You have to make sure that that has been done before you even look at this part, okay? So let's go balance. So remember, here's the steps that we follow when um, balancing an equation. So we always start with metals. Now, metals are the things on the left-hand side of this line. Um, obviously, hydrogen is actually a non-metal. So the non-metal, I mean, the metals that we have would be calcium. See calcium over there? So on the left-hand side, we have one calcium, and on the right, we have one calcium. The next step is to go balance all of the non-metals except if you have hydrogen and oxygen. So like, don't, don't do those. So the only non-metals we have would be chlorine, because it's over here on the periodic table, and carbon, which is over here. So let's go do chlorine. So chlorine on the left, we have one, and on the right, we have two. So to balance that, you don't put a two here, you put it in the front. Okay, so now we have two chlorines on the left, two chlorines on the right. Now we're gonna go look at carbon. So on the left-hand side, we have one carbon, and on the right-hand side, we also have one carbon. Okay, so all the non-metals are done. Now we move on to hydrogen. So on the left side, we have uh, two hydrogens, and on the right, we also have two. That looks good. Then we go to oxygen, lastly, and on the left side, we have three, so three oxygens, and on the right, we have two plus one, which is three, and so everything is now balanced. So now we can actually start the question, and remember it's all about moles, so always keep that in mind, and there are four different formulas that we have that use moles, and you are gonna use the one depending on what information they have given us. So here they gave us 50 grams. Okay, so we're gonna use this one. So we're gonna use N equals to M over capital M, and our goal is to try to get the, the moles of any one of these. So let's see what they've told us. They said 50 grams of CaCO3. Okay, so we can get the moles of this one. So we're gonna say 50 over. Now, to work out the mass of CaCO3, the molar mass, you go to the periodic table, so there's a calcium, there is a carbon, and there's three oxygens, three times 16. If you had to go calculate this, you should end up with 0 0.5 mole. So we have the moles of CaCO3. The moles of CaCO3 is 0 0.5. Now, with that, you could get the moles of this one, this one, this one, and this one, but we don't have to go get all of them. We now need to read the question. It says, determine the mass of CaCl2. Okay, so we're gonna get the moles of 
CaCl2. So you need to look at the ratios. So look at the number in the front, one and one. Ah, so their ratios are the same. So that means this number is going to be the same. But let me show you how we do that. So you put CaCO3, then you put CaCl2, and then you put the ratio that you see in the equation. Then you put what we have, and then you work out x. So here's where you do the arrows. So those two and those two. So you're going to multiply these two, and that'll give you 1x. Then you're going to multiply these two, and that'll give you 0 0.5. And so if you calculate x, you're just going to end up with 0 0.5. So that means we have 0 0.5 moles of CaCl2. So now they asked us to find the mass of CaCl2. So we could use this formula again, n equals to m over capital M. And so you could say, now remember, when you want to get this one, then your formula changes to this. Okay, and so the number of moles is 0 0.5. Now the mass of Cl, uh, CaCl2 is going to be, there's one Ca, which is 40, and then there's two Cl molecules. So two multiplied by 35.5. And if we had to go calculate this, we end up with 55.5 grams. So here's our next equation. Now remember, well, our next question. Now the, remember, the important thing is that you always balance this first, okay? So the way we balance is we use these steps over here. So we divide our reaction into a left side and a right-hand side, and we're talking about the left and right of this arrow. So we start by balancing metals. Now metals are everything to the left of this jagged line, okay? So your metals would be Na, for example. Hydrogen is not a metal. It's You've got to remember that hydrogen actually is a non-metal. So on the left-hand side, we have 1Na. On the right-hand side, we have 2. So we fix that now by not putting a 2 there. Those are valency numbers. We don't change those. We put a 2 in the front because that 2 is, says that there's 2 Na's, 2 oxygens, and 2 hydrogens. So now on the left, we have 2. Now we go to the next step, which says balance all of the non-metals, which is everything on the right-hand side here, except for hydrogen and oxygen. So that would be sulfur. On the left, we have 1, and on the right, we also have 1. So that's balanced. Now we can go to hydrogen. So on the left-hand side, we've got 2 over there, and then another two over here, because remember this two is for all of those. So that's gonna be a total of four. Now on the right hand side, we only have two. So I'll put a two over there, so that makes four hydrogens. We're now gonna do oxygen. So on the left hand side, we have four over there and another two over here, because remember this two is for all of those. So that's gonna be six oxygens. On the right hand side, we have two oxygens, and another four over there, so that's a total of six oxygens. So our equation is balanced. Only now should we go and do this question. So we have learned that with stoichiometry, it's all about getting the moles. And you just need to get the mole of one of these substances, and then from there you can get the moles of any of the others. So remember, there are four different formulas based upon, or four different formulas that you can use depending on what they give you. So there we go. So here they give us a volume, okay? Now you might be thinking, oh, okay, so maybe I should use this one. But this formula only gets used when they mention that there's a gas. So one of these would have to be a gas. And they would usually use the word STP, which stands for standard temperature and pressure. Instead, we are actually gonna use this one. Now the reason is, is if you look here, we've got a mole dot dm minus three, that is concentration. So they've given us concentration and volume, so we could use this formula to get moles. Now, make sure that you use this formula in the correct way. So you see how the moles is at the top, so you could make a little triangle, or well, let's actually do that down here, where the n would be at the top, and then you would have a c and a v. 
So if we had to, because the n is at the top, you would just multiply these two because they're next to each other. So it's just c times v. And so we could say here that n is equal to c times v. So they tell us that we have two decimeters and three mole per decimeter of H2SO4. So we could work out the moles of H2SO4. So I'm just going to say here moles of H2SO4 is equal to uh, the concentration, which is three, multiplied by the volume, which is two. And that's going to give us six moles. Excellent. That is the most important part, because once you have the moles of one of these, then you can get the moles of any of the others depending on what the question asks. So the question says, determine the mass of this that is produced. Okay, so if you look at the ratios, the number in the front, there's a one there, and there would be a one there. So they are equal. So you could say H2SO4 to Na2SO4, they are equal, one to one. So if we have six moles of H2SO4, then you could go do the calculation, but that means you would also have six moles of Na2SO4 because one is to one is the same as six is to six. So we have six moles of Na2SO4. So the moles of Na2SO4 is going to be six. Now they want us to find the mass. So we could now use this formula over here. So if you had to make that into a triangle, this one's at the top. So it would be like that and then like that and then like that. Oops, sometimes my triangles came out so ugly. There we go, that's not too bad. Okay, so if you're trying to calculate this M over here, you would say M is equal to N multiplied by capital M. And so the mass would be equal to the number of moles, which is six, multiplied by capital M, which is molar mass, which you get on the periodic table. So you see how it's got two sodiums, so two sodiums, so that's going to be, uh, let's write it over here, m is equal to 6 multiplied. So two sodiums, that's going to be 2 times 23 plus. It's got one sulfur. Now each sulfur has a mass of 32 plus. And then four oxygens. So that's going to be each one has a mass of 16. If you had to go calculate this, you get a big mass of 800, whoopsie, 852 grams. So here's our next question. So the first step is always to balance, okay? So the way we balance is we use these steps over here. So we we divide our reaction into two halves, the one stuff on the left and the stuff on the right of the arrow. So on the left, we have Na, which is a metal, okay? Because it says balance all the metals first. So on the left, we have one, and on the right, we also have one. So those are balanced. So now we go balance all of the non-metals, except for things like hydrogen and oxygen. So that would be a non-metal, would be something like Cl. So on the left, we have one, and on the right, we have one, so that's good. Now we go balance all of the hydrogen. Okay, so on the left, we have one, and on the right, we have two. Okay, so we need to fix that. The way that we fix that is we put a two in the front here, but now that two has now made two CLs. So now we have two CLs on the left, so these aren't balanced anymore. So to fix that, you have to change the CL to a two, but you can't put a two there because those valency numbers are already balanced. Do so you put it there? And so there we have it. But now by putting that two over there, you've now made two NAs on the right. But look at this, there's only one on the left. So to fix that, we put a two in the front there. Wow, this is actually an awesome one. And now everything is perfectly balanced, okay? Now it is at this step where we can go and do the uh, question. So they tell us that the following reaction takes place at STP. Ooh, did you see that? STP. When you see that, you should think about molar volume, which is something that only happens with gas, hello, which is going to be a number, 22.4 decimeters, okay? They'll give you this in the exam uh, on your... On your um, formula sheet, for example. Okay, so we know that we are busy with a gas, we can use a um, certain formula. So they tell us that 73 grams of HCl is used. Okay, now we've got these different formulas. Uh, this one, we've got this one, and we've got this one. Now this question doesn't talk about concentrations or number of particles. So we're going to start with the HCl. 
Okay, now they give us the mass. So we're gonna use this one for HCl. So let's go calculate that first. So it's gonna be equal to its mass divided by its molar mass. Now remember the molar mass is on the periodic table. So HCl, so that's gonna have one hydrogen and then one chlorine. Now if you had to go calculate this, you end up with two mole, two mole. Excellent. So we have the moles of HCl. Once you have the moles of one of them, you can get the moles of any of the other ones. Now they say, determine the volume of hydrogen gas produced. Okay, so they're talking about volume and they spoke about STP, so we can just use this formula. But we, so, so, so we're gonna say N is equal to V over VM. So we know VM, they want us to calculate this, but we don't know the number of moles of hydrogen. We only have the moles of HCl. So here's where we use ratios. So we know that the ratio of HCl to hydrogen is a two to one ratio. So two to one. So if we have two moles of HCl, we need to figure out how many moles of hydrogen do we have. Now some of you might be able to see the answer very quickly, but for those of you that are a bit confused, then what we do now, well what it means is that for every, so for every two moles of hydrochloric acid, you're always gonna have one mole of hydrogen. So this answer here for X is gonna be a one, but let me just show you in case you didn't understand. So remember I've showed you earlier in this lesson that what you do here is you multiply uh, these two together, so that'll be two X, and then you multiply these two together and that'll give you two. Then you divide to get X by itself and X would be one. So the moles of hydrogen is going to be one. So the mole of hydrogen will be one. Okay, so now we can use this formula because now we have the number of moles and we have this. So to get this part by itself, you should have V equals to N multiplied by molar volume. And so that's gonna be one multiplied by molar volume, which is 22.4. Kevin, where did you get that number from? Guys, that is a number that they will give you. It's a special number that I've spoken about where if you are at STP, which is something I've spoken about before, then we can use VM as 22,4. And so if you had to work this out, you would end up with 22,4. Uh, let's just write it a little bit better. You'd get 22,4 decimeters.